Hello everyone, welcome back to The Parted Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a Blood and Plunder ship kit bashing. So I plan on using some of the old kits that I've been building over the last couple of years, and I've had, I have spare parts left over. Uh, and uh, mainly because I did alterations on certain ships. There's a Paragua that I actually got rid of the entire uh, setup that was on the top of it that comes with the ship. Uh, and built a, an entire, entirely different ship out of it. And uh, also uh, the Sloop of War, which I did on this channel, um, that was essentially a brigantine, but altered. So I had spare parts left over. Uh, and, of course, the Galleon build. Uh, if you guys all remember the Galleon I built on this channel, uh, it was kind of a repair job, something that I messed up from um, one of my son's projects. Uh, and I stripped all that uh mass and rigging and everything off that ship but i kept it and and i mentioned in that episode that i would probably use it for a future project and i wasn't really sure what i was going to do with all these spare parts uh and i also had uh when you buy the uh corvette ship kit uh there's alterations it's it's probably the most versatile sh ship kit that uh firelock games produces Mainly because it's so, you know, there's so many different options you can do with it. Uh, it, it comes with spare parts and different uh, variations, so you can change the configuration of the ship uh, to whatever you want, so we can customize it. And it kind of looks like that's where we're going in the future with uh, these new plastic ships, and there will be lots of opportunity to customize those ships as well. So I was really drawn to that kit. Uh, I purchased it. I uh, absolutely love that uh, Corvette. Um, and, but I had spare parts left over. I actually had quite a few spare parts left over. So I had parts from that, I had parts from the Galleon, I had parts from this Brigantine and this Proagua. And I kind of put it to the side and I'm like, well, what am I going to do with this stuff? Uh, and then I kind of had in the back of my mind I was going to build a, a wreckage or some kind of ship like that, uh, for, you know, some terrain for the battlefield. And I thought it would be a good episode for a future episode. But, uh... That's what my full intention was when I first started uh, filming this episode, was to do that as a terrain piece. But as I was building it, I kind of said, you know what, I could probably make this into a whole ship. I have enough parts here, uh, and I had this idea of making a schooner. So a schooner is similar to a sloop, but a little different. Uh, it's a little bit a uh, bigger ship. Uh, but it was very prominent in the time that uh, Blood and Plunder takes place in. It was a very common ship for pirates to use. And I'm sure Firelock Games at some point was probably going to produce uh, a schooner at some point. But I decided with all these parts, maybe I can make that myself. Maybe I can craft it. So if I didn't have the parts you know, that uh, I had from these kits, I had to craft those pieces uh, out of foam and popsicle sticks. And I kind of want to talk about a little bit of the material. Uh, you'll see it in the video, but it's, I think I wanted to spend a little bit more time on those particular uh, uh, materials. So let's take a look at some of them. So one of my favorite things that I like to use in all my crafting projects and my buildings and, and uh, is, uh, is balsa wood. So I used to get my balsa wood from Michael's. I used to have like long strips of it and you can buy it from there. And uh, But recently they, they discontinued it in my store. So I had to find an alternative. So of course, where you go, go to Amazon. So I went to Amazon and I found uh, this stuff here, um, strip bag. And it really is just, you can buy a sorted bag of balsa wood. Like all sorts of different shapes and sizes and thicknesses. So I just got a whole bunch of these bags, and it's fantastic. you got all sorts of different things you can do with these. So I do recommend uh, checking them out on Amazon and picking up some of those uh, bulk packages. They come in handy. A lot of my builds involve some kind of balsa wood, and I definitely uh, recommend uh, this product. Great balsa wood too, by the way. So good product. Uh, and then, of course, hitting the jewelry section of Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> and I've talked this uh, about this uh, before. It's kind of funny because I, I keep uh, buying jewelry from Michaels, and uh, well, I don't know. I think the the clerk thinks I'm kind of doing something weird. I don't know. I'm hanging out in the jewelry department, but uh, <laughs> I, I I get a lot of emails from Michaels uh, asking me and telling me about all these jewelry deals. <laughs> and really, I don't, I don't craft jewelry, but uh, the jewelry section in Michaels has a lot of good crafting materials in there. 
I've done all sorts of things from shields for minis, uh, uh, just adding some little extra uh, accessories for ships. Uh, and uh, that's what I did in this particular build. I found these lovely, awesome, like octopus kind of things, which are fantastic. Um, so it's, it's a company called uh, uh, Bead Gallery. And that's, they have a whole assorted of different, uh, kind of things here. I also, uh, found some starfish that I use in this ship too. So I kind of have like a sea monster motif that I added onto this, uh, schooner that I'm building. Uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at, uh, the, uh, you know, where the progress is on that in a minute here. Uh, this uh, unfortunately is going to have to be a two part series. Um, of course I had to craft this thing from the ground up, had no plans and just kind of had to build it. Uh, and paint it and get it ready for this episode. Uh, but definitely um, in the second episode, we're going we're to do all the rigging and the sails and all the stuff that really makes it look like a schooner. Uh, you know, the base is kind of generic. It kind of looks like a sloop, but elongated. I'm doing a three-mast schooner, so it'll have three masses. Apparently a schooner can have up to six masts. So they can be quite, uh, quite large and quite uh, uh, a long ship. Uh, and it definitely, uh, a distinction on it is that front, like, mass on it's really long, uh, and that's, uh, where all these sails are added on there. Um, and so that's, that's again what I'm gonna be making. Oh, uh, and one other thing I wanna show is, I've showed this before, uh, is the sea monsters. So, of course, uh, I need to have a figurehead for my ship, and I've done this, uh, on a previous ship, on the Sloop of War, I had one of these sea creatures from the same package onto that ship. Uh, but I found another one that I thought would fit well on this ship, and we'll take a look at that in a minute as well. Um, and added it to this, uh, schooner that I'm building. Alright, so those are kind of some of the materials. Uh, I have popsicle sticks, insulation, foam, other stuff I'll mention in uh, the video itself. There's lots of things to uh, mention that I added, but I wanted to kind of spend some time on those particular things. They're kind of a little different, uh, and, uh, but uh, always just check those areas in your hobby stores you'll, you'll, or our craft store and find all sorts of good things in, uh, in the jewelry section. <laughs> all right, so uh, briefly just want to show you, so this is the Corvette. So this is kind of the Corvette kit, uh, and you can see I went with the uh, chaser guns on this particular uh, one I went with. Um, but in the uh, so that left me with a different alternative back. So they, they kind of have more of like a merchant back, or it just has windows or glass windows. It's not uh, it doesn't have the two guns on it, so it looks like less like a you know a battleship or a, uh, or something. It has more of a, a merchant feel to it, so it has less gun ports. Uh, and those are the pieces that I had left over because I didn't make that configuration of the Corvette. Uh, but it definitely became the centerpiece or the, you know, the main body of this schooner. So let's take a look at it. This is what we're uh, making in this episode. This is the finished base of it. So I kind of went with this black and white motif. Uh, we're kind of going later into late 17th century, even early uh, 18th century. Uh, the schooner is a prominent ship in there, and a, and a prominent ship in North America. Um, so even the uh, colonists would have uh, used uh, this kind of ship. Uh, so this is just the base, and it has characteristics of the Corvette on it, because I use pieces of the Corvette. And there's an elongated end on here. There's pieces of the brigantine in here, like these ends on there. Uh, and all these parts where the rigging is going to, that was from the galleon. And in, in the uh, top sails will be parts of the Paragua. So all these pieces combined is going to create uh, this uh, schooner. So I just want to take a look at it. I do spend some time, I'm trying not to tip all the cannons in there, on painting MDF decks. So that's kind of a tricky thing. Um, but what I found is instead of using paint, uh, I use washes and different layers of washes. You really have the darker edges, and then you kind of layer over top of uh, a lighter washes over top, and you get a really nice uh, look to the deck. Um, so I'll cover that off in this video as well. I just kind of want to briefly show the armaments I put on there. Of course, this is my home brew <laughs> uh, of uh, rules for this thing. It's not uh, tournament legal. Um, but I just wanted to, uh, add this in, of course, in the plunder den, it's absolutely legal. <laughs> you can use this ship. All right. So you got, uh, four swivel guns in the back. You got your four, uh, 
uh, light cannons in the middle. Uh, and originally I was going to put mediums in there, but there's not enough room in there. So I had to put the mediums up top. So in the Corvette, this is kind of like a half deck. Um, but I've extended it out. So now it's a full deck. So this ship has three decks, kind of like a Brigantine. Uh, and it has two medium cannons on the front. And, and like I said, four light and four swivel guns. So that's your armaments on this ship. Uh, it'll have three masts. They're kind of the same height on a scooter. Uh, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, sails like a, like a sloop, essentially. Um, and uh, that's what we'll be building in the second episode. But in this first episode, we're going to cover that. So there's that sea monster I was talking about. It's kind of like a big, uh, like a fish or something. Uh, and then we got our octopus in the back, some starfish. So I just wanted to show you some of the accessories we added on there. All right, so that's pretty much it. I think I've talked enough. Let's get down to the table and let's start crafting and let's start painting. Okay, I forgot to mention in the intro, if you like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, uh, so really here I'm starting uh, with uh, showing all the galleon pieces that I peeled off on that uh, galleon build. I'm just showing you that I have to tear them all apart. Sadly, I used hot glue to put them together, and now I have to chip them away and pull them all apart and sand them down. So this is after I've disassembled all of them. And that's going to become more prominent in the second episode. Uh, <laughs> it's my big pile of, oh yeah, glue gun. Terrible idea. Don't ever do that. Uh, I still put my sails on uh, some of them with the glue. Uh, but uh, I don't put the mask together anymore. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in the uh, next episode. All right, so uh, this is the top part of the Corvette. So I had the deck uh all the decks actually for the conversion uh and uh, i decided to trace it onto some insulation foam so i need something to make the body of the ship with and what if you get the kit the corvette kit that's what it comes with is a piece of foam so that's kind of how i uh made up for not having it i just cut my own piece of foam out uh just showing you some sandpaper and i uh, did a lot of shaping uh of the uh, of the base of the ship so I kind of went back to this several times throughout the build. So then I glued the top on. I decided to use tacky glue to glue that uh, top on. I normally might have used hot glue, but hot glue will melt that foam. So I decided to use that. And, and unfortunately, those MDF kits uh, started warping in my basement. Uh, I didn't use them. They were just sitting in a pile in the corner of the plunder den here. And uh, they started to warp a little bit. So I had to use those weights to weight it down. I'm just showing you this is the back deck and the there's that little half deck I was talking about. Uh, I did the uh, kind of the same thing. I just traced out some foam uh, that was going to be underneath it. Same thing here. But as you can see, I extended it out uh, because I wanted to make it a full deck and not a half deck. Uh, because I plan on putting cannons up there. I want it to be like a brigantine. Uh, so I'm just showing you I'm going to glue all these pieces together. So that's the back of the ship with the windows. Uh, that's the other conversion you can have in the Corvette. Uh, and that's the part I'm going to use because that's the part that I have. So then I traced, I uh, sort of kind of carved out uh, little chunks here in the foam. Uh, and this is where the rigging is going to be sitting in. So I had to glue those together. So before I put the top on, uh, I uh, took these uh, pieces of right here from the galleon and uh, I glued them in there. And again, I put weights on top of them. I don't show you uh, that I put weights on these other pieces, but I did the same thing. Once I put those pieces on there, I put in some weights on them. And I let it dry for a good two, three hours. And uh, it actually uh, straightened about completely. And it glued nicely to the bottom. So just to give it a little extra support, um, I decided to glue a match stick on top of it. Just to give it extra extra uh, support on those. Because uh, once I start tugging on that rigging, I want to make sure it's completely solid. So this is the creature I decided to pick. I think it's like a deep sea creature. Uh, and uh, I like, kind of like the whimsical like look to it. Um, I think it would it was appropriate for a front of a ship. So maybe the head's a little bit big, but I'm okay with it. I was pretty happy with it. So this is, a, I also had these parts left of the Corvette, uh, which is uh, two side panels. So you get duplicates when you buy that kit. 
uh, because you can make alterations and, and you can uh, change the configuration. So then I glued this part on as well. I made a little base you can see for it uh, in foam there to sit on. So it sits stable and I glued that in there uh, in that little front mass. Uh, this is after I've glued all the windows and the back on. And it's starting to shape up. It's starting to look like a ship now. <laughs> uh, I had uh, just kind of, a, you know, I was wigging it, to be honest. I, I didn't really know. I kind of know how the Corvette was built, so I kind of kept that in the mind, the back of my mind when I was building this. Uh, but, of course, I wanted to alter it. So this is the extension. So I didn't have, I, I could have went the same way. I just kind of added, uh, those are actually coffee stir sticks, to just add some more decking to the top. And then I put a triangle piece of foam on the underneath that window and that kind of just fills in uh the back of the ship i do have to add a rudder to it which i i do plan on adding in a minute here so then i start working on the gun ports so that's just balsa wood i cut some squares out even squares uh and then kind of just looked at uh putting a top on there this is when i became to the realization that i can't put medium cannons there they just wouldn't fit uh, I would have to make the center too high, and it just didn't work in the overall design. Uh, but I realized I could make it a little bit taller on the top part, and then I could put the medium cannons up there. So then I started creating that grid just out of matchsticks. It's usually sitting on the top of the deck. I guess that's the uh, where the cargo goes into, the opening. Uh, so I had to craft that. I didn't have that those pieces left over. I did have that little compartment door. For some reason, there was two of those in the kit as well. So and then I used, uh, those are all uh, coffee stir sticks, and I kind of just filling in the gaps. And I do both sides. I do the front and the inside, uh, and it kind of gives that nice planked look to it uh, on the side walls. It's kind of similar to the way the real Firelock game ships look like. Um, so it has a real, uh, I kind of wanted to definitely make this feel like it's uh, like a Firelock game ship and not something else. And I just figured if I use enough of the ship parts and, and built certain things to look like it, uh, that it would look like a, like a ship here. So I realized that I couldn't add planks to there and stick out too far. So I kind of just carved it into the foam. Uh, it was okay. I, I would rather have had planks in there, but it kind of solved the rounding parts on the front. Uh, just using foam. It's easier to, uh, you know, obviously craft foam. So those two uh, pieces there are actually from a fighting top kit. Uh, and then that's the top is from a brigantine. And uh, kind of glue those all together. On a schooner, they have a long front on there with because they have a lot of sails attached to the front of it. Uh, and then I'm showing you, I'm just adding planks to the front. So I added planks to those first two sections, but I couldn't bend them any further. I had to fill those other gaps in with foam. Uh, then I had to address uh, where the swivel guns are going to be. So I kind of started the hole with a screw here. Then I used a nail uh, and just kind of lightly hammered in a big enough hole. That little finishing nail, you usually get them with a furniture kit. is a perfect size uh, for a swivel gun uh, hole. Uh, there's that octopus and starfish I was talking about. I glued those on, and you can see there's a rudder uh, that I just took out of some dollar store foam board and cut that to fit into that uh, spot there. So I just, I'm going to show you the packaging. Well, we talked about it in the intro, um, but I kind of filmed it while, while I was doing it as well. I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it at the beginning or just while I was building it. Now, that octopus, I did cut the, the bottom tentacle off uh, because it, it, it was actually covering the window, and I didn't want that. So I kind of cut it at an angle so it looked like it, it didn't need to be there. Um, but uh, one of the tentacles I had to cut off. So I just added some other details, put some starfish at the front. I fabricated this foam, uh, like, front of the ship, kind of to match the sides. Uh, and then I used that uh, uh, texturizing tool, essentially just a wire brush uh, that I use uh, to make my shingles. Uh, I just wanted to add wood grains to the sides of the ship and the top. Uh, anything I used, essentially, uh, foam on, just to give it wood grains. Uh, it worked out pretty good. Uh, there were some gaps in there. I kind of just wedged some pieces of foam in there. I kind of sanded it down and painted it over. Once he did that, it, you can't even notice that there's some imperfections in there. It's just a lot of uh, fabricating. So then I had to make this little front of the ship. I just I just cut it out of foam. Uh, again, uh, maybe wood would have been better, 
but uh, foam is easier to use. You can make uh, round shapes, just sand it. And again, once you paint everything, it, you can't really tell what's foam and what's wood. It just looks the same. But just giving you an overall good look at all the stuff I've added. I had those little circular details, and you can see I added steps there uh, just to measure out where you move the ship. So it's just like a regular Firelock Games ship. And just showing you using that sanding tool. I kind of went back and hit some of these foam areas just to smooth them out a little bit more, just so there's not just as many things sticking up. Uh, there's still some when I did the final uh, paint job, and you'll see it. There's some areas where I couldn't paint it quite right. Um, this is the uh, multi-surface black craft paint, and I'm going to start uh, painting this. And really, uh, I, I'm going to paint everything but the the top deck. Now, <laughs> this is pretty tricky, actually. Uh, normally, I just slap on the craft paint. This is an easy step for me. Uh, but I had to work around not blobbing black paint on that MDF top. Uh, it would totally ruin it. Um, so you can see it was <laughs> fancy footwork and there's a smudge up there. I did drop a few drops in there. I was not paying attention. Yeah. So this is the painting of the deck I was talking about. So that's strong tone wash, dark tone wash. Uh, and I use a, a light wash here in a minute, but I'll show you these two. I actually start with a strong tone and I kind of just work the edges, uh, of this MDF. It actually, uh, the thing with these kits is they actually absorb uh, the wash, kind of like a stain, really. So it's like you're staining the wood, uh, and it takes really well to washes. Uh, I don't recommend using any paints on, on, the, on this stuff. I, I would use washes. It's so much better. And it's transparent, so you can see the design that's been put on the kit, right? So it still looks like it has planks. It's, it's the perfect thing to put on there. So this is, looks pretty messy right now. All I had is added was uh, uh, those uh, strong tone. Now I'm moving to a light tone. I kind of cover the entire thing in light tone. So this is after I've covered it all with light tone. Then I moved back to a dark tone, and I went and hit those edges again, and the front mast, uh, uh, I add all the uh, dark tone on there. Just added more. It gives it a more weathered look, similar to the uh, bark uh, paint job that we did. But we're just doing this all in washes and uh, no paint here. So I just briefly showed you a little bit. It's really uh, fiddly stuff. I just kind of... I went over it. You can keep going over and over again, but try not to darken the center of the deck because then it'll start uh, just blending in as one big uh, dark blob. So I've done all the deck. Now I've moved on to the my uh, Bark Brown, Real Brown, Pablo, and uh, Camel uh, combo that I use for my uh, undertones, my earth tones that I put on everything. So I'm just showing you I'm doing that. We're not going to watch that. I'm just briefly mentioning it because it's a step I took. And here's the paintbrush I used. So this is after I've completed it all. Got kind of a nice uh, aged wood look to it. Uh, and, you know, I, I do plan on covering a lot of this in paint. But any areas that are exposed, it'll have that nice aged wood look to it, which I, I want to capture. Plus that figurehead is kind of going to leave a wood color. I didn't want to add too many crazy colors to the front of, the, of this boat. So then I went to the matte black. Uh, kind of looking at that picture of the schooner, uh, it had a white and black motif, and that's pretty common in North America and uh, adopted by, uh, you know, I know the British and the U.S. military had those, uh, if you look at the U.S.'s Constitution, and, and, but it has a kind of a, a burgundy bottom or whatever to it, but it has those colors, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at, the black and white scheme. So I, I did put a gray below where the white is going to be first, and then I added the white over top of the gray. It just adds a little bit of shadowing. Uh, not much. You can barely see it uh, on here. Unfortunately, uh, these things look a little bit better in real life than they do uh, on the camera here. It's not quite right, um, but that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, just let you know, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, anyways, I, I plan to do that octopus in the uh, greedy gold and uh, using those uh, starfish with that gunmetal. I put those uh, metallic colors on first, and then I add the strong tone wash over top. Uh, and I also decided to do a red stripe uh, where they separate. So actually where I put that top deck on, it has a nice stripe in there. And I use the two tones of red, so that dragon red and pure red. Uh, and I'm just showing you about the washes on the metallics. 
So we're going to cut through all that step being done. There we go. We're all completed. I'm put that nice big red stripe on there. Just adds a little bit of something to it. So it's not just black and white. Those are the uh, octopus and starfishes all uh, painted up uh, with the uh, washes. I did end up going back with, uh, we're going to go here in a minute with some yellows and, and uh, some contrast paint to add a little bit more to it. So now I'm showing you the windows, and I've showed this in the Galleon uh, in paint uh, tutorial. Uh, I'm just adding light to the windows, so that uh, moon dust. Demonic yellow uh, and lava orange. Those are the uh, standard colors uh, I use for uh, just adding light to the windows. Uh, we're not going to cover that because I've done it before. Uh, that's uh, Basilic uh, Brown. Uh, and our skeleton horde contrast. Just gonna touch up those stairs just so I highlight it where you can see where they are. And I also added some color to the uh, figurehead and those circle pieces there on the side there, just the details, uh, just add to it. So this is some of my new minis on there. I just uh, put it on the ship here as Captain Morgan, a different look on Captain Morgan, um, and uh, some Zeelandin and uh, Interplog that I've given a kind of a British look to them with the red coats. Um, and there's some new uh, sea dogs I painted in there. Just a new cruise that I painted for this ship. So let's take a little, one more look at everything. There's little details, everything's painted up. So now we're ready for our next step, which will be uh, doing the mast and rigging and uh, the top of the ship. All right, if you like what we're doing here in the Potter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Potter Den and get first hand information when I start these kind of projects. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.